Good morning. Uh, it's a little after five, and we've been up for about half an hour. Grab the ear sack and doing some breakfast here in the hammock. Uh, we mixed up some hot chocolate. Very tasty. That's a 16 ounce Nalgene bottle with a beer koozie on it, and it keeps stuff warm. Uh, quite well and uh, we're trying uh, some granola this morning so uh, I prepackaged uh, a cup of off-the-shelf granola from the grocery store uh, with a bit of powdered milk uh, forget the exact measurements it was, uh, oh yeah it was I worked it out. It was two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of uh, powdered milk uh, in a Ziploc and uh, carried it that way and then put it in the pot. And uh, added eight ounces of water. And we have granola. I think if I'd warmed the water up a little bit, that might have uh, improved things. So anyway, now we're kind of stuck. Uh, we can't do much in terms of packing up camp until we've eaten, so we best get on with that. Well, it's about 25 after 6, and we are packed up and ready to go. Uh, well, looking around, I don't see anything that I left behind. I know my hiking poles are behind me. And the tree huggers are definitely down. Nothing else lying on the ground. So, eh, let's hope we can find our way back to the trail. That's one of those things about stealth sites is you're off in the woods. Ooh, creepy. Well, pretty sure we can make our way. Well, both the trail book description and the evidence of a stone step work in this area makes it pretty clear that this is where I am intended to cross the river. Uh, the guidebook suggests that rock hopping will do. Uh, I don't quite see how that's going to work. So some waiting is certainly uh, in the offing. Uh, one of the disadvantages of hiking alone is there's not going to be anybody to film this and I'm not going back and forth three times in order to uh, make a video, so. Uh, and the other thing that's not entirely clear is where in the world the trail is once we get to the other side, so yet another adventure. There we go. So I have opted to come downstream a short distance uh, to where the water is moving a little more slowly. Uh, upstream was much more of a rapid situation. Uh, I'm liking this much better. So that was completely uneventful, which is <laughs> what we were hoping for. Uh, the water came up to a little below my knee. And the, the footing was not really all that treacherous. So. But now I'm here on the other bank, and I'm still not seeing any sign of the trail. Uh, I'm guessing those two rocks are kind of a cairn, and maybe marking the trail. We'll go see. Well, I don't know if those rocks were intended to be a cairn or not, but um, we're now standing at the trailhead on the opposite side of the river, and it is pretty much directly across, a little bit downstream uh, from where that rock work is on the other side, which I doubt you can actually make out, but it's right over there. Uh, so, and the trail now goes that way, and uh, in keeping with yesterday, it's wet. Well, we're already wet, so what does it matter? So after just a few feet, uh, we come to uh, the junction where the Black Angel Trail leaves the Wild River Trail and uh, heads up 
uh, towards the rim. So the next feature is the Blue, the Blue Brook campsite. Uh, two point, I think, four miles should take an hour and thirty-five minutes. Uh, very little elevation gain, only a excuse me, mosquito. Uh, two hundred and forty-four feet, I believe it was. Um, so that's where we're headed. Well, so uh, this Black Angel Trail uh, really ought to be given a different name because it has an entirely different character than the Black Angel Trail on the other side of the river. Uh, yeah, there are a few places that are a little wet or a little rocky, but for the most part it's nice and smooth and uh, dryish and uh, a very moderate ascent. So uh, we're looking forward to a very pleasant ascent up to Blue Brook, which is uh, Blue Brook campsite, which is supposed to be very nice. And we expect to get there about 8.30. Uh, I think, as I said, we, we had left camp. About 6.30, spent about half an hour getting down to the river and then across the river. And so, an hour and a half, in addition, will which, which put us there at 8.30. Although with a trail like this, we won't be surprised if we beat the time. So there is sun out there, and lots of blue sky. Uh, oh, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned the temperature at all. Uh, that's because as I was packing up to leave, I discovered my little zipper pull thermometer was broken. It was registering minus 20 in my house. So I don't know the temperature. It's supposed to be pretty moderate all weekend. It was 59 when I left the car yesterday. That's the last known measurement. Uh, at some point, I'll go over the map again. Show you what we're, what we're doing today. All right, on to Blue Brook. So it's about a uh, quarter after eight, and we have arrived at the Blue Brook tent site. Uh, there used to be a shelter here. They took it down a few years ago. Um, we'll take a look around. Well, it's the area is not well signed. Um, here is obviously one tent pad, although the term is it's more like a tent pit. Um, looks like it's guaranteed to collect water, uh, but. Uh, I, I stumbled across this by accident, but it looks like there's probably a few places to hang a hammock in this relatively open area. We'll press on. Well, this is certainly a lovely area. I haven't found any more tent sites, but I'm not going to keep looking. Time to move on. Well, I should learn to read maps. Uh, so I went down here and then turned right and obviously found this tent site. And that there was a trail here was pretty obvious. Uh, that it continued on was not. Uh, so I should have continued on on that side trail. Uh, this is where I went out to the water. This must go to the water 
below that cascade that I was at the top of. Uh, I know I've seen a picture of that in somebody's uh, written trip report. Um, so that's where that is. So, three ten sites. Okay, so now we're off to Rim Junction, which is about half a mile away uh, and should take us 21 minutes according to book time. Uh, I should say that the, the Black Angel Trail did not keep its uh, oh, uh, peaceful demeanor. Uh, after ascending gradually for quite a ways, uh, it then uh, descended steeply and degenerated into... Uh, what I guess is just true nature, so steep, rocky, wet. Eh, but that was that. On we go. So we've arrived at Rim Junction, and it's aptly named because there's there's a lot of trails here. Uh, but we are interested in the Basin Rim Trail, uh, 1.4 miles to the Mount Meter Trail. Book time, one hour, 11 minutes. Um, you, you may be able to hear, uh, I'm, I'm reasonably protected now, so hopefully it's not affecting the sound too much, but uh, right over my head, the wind is ripping, so when we get into the open, I'm suspecting there will be no audio available. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot some, and uh, uh, maybe I'll have to do both voiceover later or captions or something. Uh, so we have left, you can see that sign behind me, the uh, wilderness area. So the rim trail uh, has apparently blazes and... There's some bog bridging in a place where it's not even needed. So, uh, don't know what that bodes for the future. So we're supposed to see some views. Off we go. So we're basically looking east here into Maine. Into the basin. And... I'm guessing that's Mount Meter over there. hasn't been more video the the wind is howling out there and eh, it would be uh, video only and I'm conserving the battery again uh, anyway that's that's uh, north bald face behind me I hope you can see that um, and we should be at the summit there in 46 minutes um, certainly should be good views but <laughs> uh, well that's enough isn't it
So I got to the South Baldface shelter uh, a little after two, after a wicked descent uh, off South Baldface. Um, there are warnings that you shouldn't try that route in inclement weather, and I would uh, <laughs> advise anyone considering it to heed that warning. Uh, it's just slabs at steep angles and if they were wet they'd be treacherous and actually in some places the trail provides its own water with springs that keep them perpetually wet so uh, that's fun uh, anyway found that the this bald the bald face loop is very popular popular with day hikers it's Sunday today and other than the wind a gorgeous day so that's not really all that surprising um, until I hit the loop I had uh, well I met three hikers in 15 minutes on the Appalachian Trail, but other than that, I hadn't met anyone until I hit the bald face loop, and then it was just one set of day hikers after another, and a lot of them are going to be descending this way, so I'll have visitors passing by um, for the rest of the afternoon, I guess, but <clears throat> I certainly don't expect any overnight visitors. Um, so I did find a place uh, to put up the hammock, uh, not too far from the shelter. It would have been okay with me if it was further, but this is the only spot. It it's, seems to be the only designated tent spot, and it's a lousy tent spot, but it's perfectly okay for a hammock. And there is water here. Um, it'd be real surprising. Uh, as wet as it's been, uh, any spring that's not running now is beyond unreliable. It's borderline non-existent. Um, so I'm not sure how to spend my time. I'm going to get some water and, and drink a bunch. That's number one. I got a little bit chilled. I had to put on most of my clothes. Uh, well, I took off my hiking clothes, so I could wear those too. And I got a pair of rain pants I could put on if I needed to, but I think I'm okay right now. Uh, I'm going to make myself uh, some tea since I have plenty of time. Um, unfortunately, while I have time, I could fool around with a bush buddy. It is still... Too windy. I, <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Uh, so we're going to use up more alcohol. Well, we got a bunch. There, a hot cup of tea. Mmm. Still too hot to drink, actually. Okay, for dinner this evening, we're having packet gourmet Dottie's chicken, yeah, Dottie's chicken and dumplings. Uh, you've seen this before. Uh, what does it say? Uh, roast chicken and southern style dumplings. Uh, and a rich country gravy. Alright. Uh, so this is my first packet gourmet meal. I have another at home. And there's the pot. And, uh... It's a little thinner than I thought it would be. Smells good, though. <clears throat> well, okay. Uh, that was pretty tasty. I ate it all. Um, and I will say that um, I think uh, that was just a notch above uh, other backpacking meals I've had, including my own. So, um, well, something to consider for the, uh, for the future. Well, it's about 6.30 and we are snug at our hammock. We're uh, concerned about the temperature tonight. Uh, the weather forecast when I left home said the temperature should be in the mid-40s, and I've been cold at the mid-40s before. Uh, plus, we have the wind. Uh, so, uh, I've done something I haven't done before, which is uh, I've... I've pitch the hammock low and uh, close the doors on both ends uh, so I'm kind of stuck in here and at the moment I'm still wearing uh, my camp fleece in addition to my sleeping um, long johns which are uh, mid-weight fleece um, and I'm, I'm a little overwarm at the moment, but I just ate that big meal, so 
perhaps I'll cool off a little. Anyway, uh, we'll see how this goes. Good night.